Thank you, Wing Theory, guys. This is the mathematical study of waiting lines or queues. There are several related processes arriving at the back of the queue, waiting in the queue, or the essentially a storage process, and being served by the server at the front of the queue, aka or also known as waiting line. <laughs> Hello and welcome to everyone. So this will be our new topic and this is all about queuing theory and introduction only. Okay, so here on this presentation, what we will going to do is I will give you some insights on what is a queuing theory, paano siya ina-apply in real world, you know, and ano ba ito, ano yung mga statistical distribution behind this, and of course, what are the models of the, the queuing theory. Okay? So, let's have our discussion. Let's start our discussion. I have a question here, guys. Have you ever experienced being in the queue or, or in the queue waiting for so long? Naranasan nyo na ba yan? Sobrang haba nung pila, pero hindi ka makaalis kasi nga, kailangan mo. <laughs> kasi importante yan, no? And... Ngayon mahaba yung pila dahil hindi okay yung system as a whole. No, ayun yung mga isa sa mga reasons kung bakit nangyayari yan. Kahit saan, maybe it to a pier sa airport, sa grocery, in banks, in hospitals, in school, no, even in school. In in in, in road, no, sa traffic that is also a queue. Now, actually, if you are if you already experienced this one, Actually, that is part of the team woods, kung naalala nyo nyo, yung waiting natin. By the way, let's have a recap. When we say team woods, these are the ways na kung hindi man natin siya ma-eliminate totally, 100%, at least we must minimize them. Ito yung mga ayaw natin eh, no? We have the transportation, inventory, motion, waiting, overprocessing, overproduction, defects or the rejects, and lastly, the skills, specifically the non-utilized skills or non-utilized talents ng mga workers natin. And kung titingnan ninyo, part niyan is yung waiting. Waiting for information or items to arrive or it can also be a service no, to arrive sa'yo or to, to, be, to be served sa'yo. That is part of the waste na dapat natin na binabukasan. That's why we have the skewing theory para itong waiting malesson. Okay, that is the purpose of this topic. Now, sabi ko nga, no, babawasan natin yung waiting through queuing theory. So, here we have the common queuing situations. First, we have the supermarket. So, the arrivals in queued here are the grocery shoppers. No, they, they will go to the supermarket and the service process is the checkout for the clerks at cash register. For the highway toll booth, I know you're familiar with this one. Arrivals, of course, among automobiles natin. And the service process, there is the collection of toll fees. Okay? So, we have also queuing in the doctor's office for the patients. You know, the, before sila i-treat doctors or nurses, they must wait sa pila. You know? They must uh, be one of those people in the queue. Now, in the computer systems, we have these arrivals na yung mga programs to be run. Then, those programs to be run when served, that is actually when the computer is already processing jobs. Okay, now, in bank situation, arrivals in queue, we have their the clients. Now, the clients that uh, actually needs to have some service no needs to be served by the teller so the transactions handled by the teller that is the service process in the bank lastly for my example for the situation we have the harbor and the arrivals in queue there are the ships no service process dock workers loading and unloading uh, processes so those are some common queuing situations na pwede nating i-apply si queuing theory no, to minimize the queue time, the waiting time of all those arrivals and of course the service process para mas paging mabilis. Okay? Now, 
what is queuing theory? Kanina ko pa sinasabi itong queuing theory. So, let's have the proper definition of the queuing theory. When we say queuing theory, guys, this is the mathematical study of waiting lines or queues. There are several related processes arriving at the back of the queue, waiting in the queue, or the essentially a storage process and being served by the server at the front of the queue, aka or also known as waiting line. So that is the queuing theory. Now, this is applicable in transport, telecommunication, manufacturing, and service area, and other uh, industries or sectors that I have mentioned before. So, incoming traffic to queuing theory systems is modeled via a Poisson distribution. So, later on this PowerPoint presentation, we will go in to discuss what is a Poisson distribution aside it is already been discussed in your statistical analysis for IE1 before. So, we will go in to have some basic recap on what is a Poisson distribution and how it is applied in this topic of the queuing theory. With the assumptions, of pure chance traffic. Now, uh, in queuing theory, the call arrivals and departures are random and independent events. Statistical equilibrium probabilities within the system do not change. All incoming traffic can be routed to any customer, any other customer within the network, and congestion is cleared as soon as servers are free. As soon as the clients or the customers are being served, are done served by the tellers, if that is the bank, by the doctors, if that is in the hospitals, etc. and etc. As soon as the clients or the, the customers gets the service that they are in need. So, okay, so for the queuing theory, Queuing theory is finding the best level of service by a trade-off. Take note guys a term, trade-off between the cost of providing good service and the cost of customer waiting time. Kasi nga uulitin ko, no, time is money. Therefore, as long as we are trapped in a waiting line, we are trapped in a queue, there's uh, a cost corresponding for it na may nawawalang pera eh. So, this is a trade between the cost of providing good service and the cost of customer waiting time. So, first in, first out or FIFO. Some other people call this as FIFO or some FIFO. Those are all the same. So, first in, first out discipline is assumed when customers are serviced according to their arrival. Okay? So, we have here the different parts of a waiting line. So, basically, pinakaunang part niyan is the population. Ang example natin is a car wash. No? So, dito sa car wash, of course, we have the population of dirty cars. Hindi natin alam ito. No infinite ito. We don't know how many is yung dirty car right now. So, dito yun yung population. This is infinite population. Then, they will going to arrive to the system. Dito yung arrivals from the general population. So, here up to here. Arrivals to the system. Then, at this point, up to this point, that is the whole system. That's, that, that is why here the halagay siya, no? In the system. So, meaning, pag naka-arrive ka na sa system, of course, hindi naman ikaw agad-agad yung nandun sa unahan ng pila. So, hindi naman ikaw agad-agad yung sinis-service nung service facility nila yung car wash no? so meaning to say we will going to have a line here waiting line or the queue na tinatawag natin maghihintay tayo before yung time natin na tayo na yung isa-serve ng facility na tayo na yung iwa-wash yung car na natin yung iwa-wash niya that is the whole system then after washing the car exit na tayo sa system this is now the exit the system. So, babalik tayo sa general population of clean cars naman. Okay. So, ayun, ayun yung basic parts of a waiting line. So, even yung pila, may parts yan, guys. <laughs> Huwag yung kakalimutan, no? Again, arrivals to the system, which are yung population. Can be, it can be infinite or it can be also finite, no? Depende sa kung ano meron tayong situation. So, yung arrivals niya. And of course, in the system, in the system, we have the queue and the 
in the service facility and of course exit the system that is the parts of a waiting line now we have these different characteristics of waiting line systems for the first one arrivals or input to the system so here we have the population size or the behavior, statistical distribution, sabi ko nga kanina, more likely, in the study of queuing theory, this is more on Poisson distribution. So second, we have the queue discipline or the waiting line itself. Limited or unlimited in length, discipline of people or items in it. Ano tong disciplines of people or items? On the next slide, we will go into discuss all those disciplines ng mga tao or ng mga item. No, pwede yun. Pwede yung style, pwede sa item, kung ano man yung nakapila. And for the third characteristics of waiting line system, we have here the service facility. So we design here the statistical distribution of service times. Just like what I have said, here, here are the different queues, uh, queues discipline, rather. So for the first one, we have the FIFO or the FIFO, first in, first out. This is also called, guys, as first come, first serve. So, anong mga example ng mga first come, first serve? So, we have here the customers. When we say first come, first serve or first uh, in, first out, the customers are served in the order they arrived in. So, this is a default. Example na ito is yung mga uh, fast food natin. No, first in, first out. Kasi sino yung unang dumating siya yung nasa unahan ng pila and he or she will be the one will be served by the ano ba tawag, by the cruise no sa mga fast food chain isa yan sa example natin ng first in first out or first come first serve ang tinutukoy ko pong system dito is yung ordering system no wala nang kinalaman sir first in first out na una kong order pero na una siyang umalis ng Jollibee or ng McDo o ano man yung fast food niya dahil mabilis siyang kumain no wala na pong kinalaman yon ang tinutukoy ko lang dito is yung pila ng ordering. No, ayun siya. Hanggang maibigay yung number then yung waiting ng number, iba na po yun. Ibang set na siya ng pila dahil iba-iba na yung length of time preparation for the food naman. Na magkakaibang set po yan. And therefore, of course, iba din yung usapan pagdating sa kinakain na nila yung mismo food. No, dahil different na yung, yung bilis ng pagkain ng mga tao. So, yung tinutukoy ko dito is only the ordering system. Okay? So, next na queues discipline natin, we have the LIFO or LIFO or LCFS. Uh, here, last in, first out. No? Or, oops, hindi ko pa nabago. No? This should be last, guys. Take note na lang. No, this should be last. Okay. Okay, so last in, first out. That is FIFO. So, this is letter A. Okay, and this is last. Okay, pa-take note na lang para hindi tayo nag-error. Okay, so last come, first serve. Or last in, first out. Ano naman ito? Ano, ano itong life po? The customers here are served in the reversed order to the order they arrive in. Best example of this queues discipline is yung uh, elevator. Kasi ninyo, now, considering the, the, the assumption na pareho, pa, pare, pareho kayo ng pinanggalingan na floors, then pare-pareho kayo ng pupuntahan na floors, kung sino yung unang pumasok, no, siya yung huling lalabas. And kung sino yung huling pumasok, no, yung last in, siya yung pinakaunang lalabas last in first out okay that is one of the example i hope you get it next we have the third one the zero or other call this as zero which is service in random order so here the customers are served in a random order with no regard to arrival order so dito no more likely, this is applied na in the system where in sobrang dami ng tao, overpopulated na, overcrowded na siya, na kung saan nagkakaroon na tayo ng singitan, no, nagiging random na yung order kahit sino man yung nauna sa inyo, kumuha ng ticket, or kung sino man ay nasa na dumating. Wala na siyang pakialam dahil ang goal na natin dito, makasakay sa tren. <laughs> na ako, ano yan? Para sa kalsada, no, naghintay ka ng bus. Wala na. Sige, kahit sino na. Pagdating ng bus, 
Kung minsan umaandar pa, sumasabit ka na, no? Service in random order po yung mga ganyang cues, discipline, tao na na, no? Random siya. Okay? So, next we have this four cues discipline, which is the PQ or the priority queuing. Now, for the priority queuing, we have here several options. Preemptive priority queuing, non-preemptive priority queuing, class-based weighted fair queuing, and weighted fair queuing. So, hindi ko muna explain yung differences ng mga to. Basta ang general idea with regards to the priority queuing, guys, we have the priority based on sa certain conditions ng ating clients or the certain conditions ng ating customers. Best example of PQ or priority queuing is the emergency room ng mga hospitals natin. So, sa emergency room, since it is emergency, kahit emergency man yan, may mga priorities pa rin tayo dyan. And alam na yan ng mga doctors and nurses natin. Depende sa case, depende sa kalagayan ng mga patients. So, it doesn't mean na nasa emergency room ka, ikaw yung naunang dumating, no? Tapos merong sumunod sa sa'yo, eh, mas malala yung condition nung nasa iyo eh. Hindi naman, oh, na, hindi ka agad to unahin. May mga ganun chances po, no? I, I hope you can understand me. Lalo na kung meron dito may background sa med, no? Ganyan yung ginagawa ng mga doctors and nurses. They have the priority kung sino unahin nila, no? Lalo sa ganitong mga sitwasyon. Okay? So, next... For the QS discipline number 5, we have here the processor sharing. So here in the processor sharing, the customers are served in the determined order with no regard or arrival order. Kahit sino man yung nauna sa inyo, no, ang susundin niya is yung uh, schedule. Sabi nga dito, no, the customers are arrive are served in the determined order, determined na yung order ninyo, meaning, naka-schedule na kayo, you have already set an appointment before kayo magpunta doon sa clinic. pinaka uh, best na example ko dito is sa dentist. If you, you, you manage to go to your dentist no, by appointment sila, pag pumunta ka doon, pwede naman walk in, pero depende na yun kung may available na dentist na magkiting sa iyo. Pero more likely nga, ano ba appointment sila? Mauna ka man or mahuli doon sa isang tao, ang susundin pa rin nila is yung time of your appointment. That is the process or see. Okay, I hope you get it. Now, we have here the different arrival characteristics naman of our queuing system. So, for the first one, we have the size of the population. So, here, we, it can be unlimited, infinite, or limited, or definite, or finite. Now, for the second, pattern arrivals, scheduled or random, often a person distribution. The behavior of arrivals, so wait in the queue and do not switch lines. No bulking or ranging. Now, ano nga ba itong person distribution? Nabanggit na naman. Of course, have, let's discuss this person distribution. When we say person distribution, guys, here's the formula. No, probability of x is, e is equals to e raised to negative lambda multiplied to lambda raised to x all over x factorial for x equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and etc. Now, this person for a distribution, the probability of x is the probability of x arrivals wherein x is equals to the number of arrivals per unit of time. Lambda is average arrival rate, yung pagdating no, gaano kalaki yung pagdating, gaano kabilis yung pagdating ng mga demands natin, ng clients, ng mga customers natin. And E is the base of the natural logarithms, 2.71828, 1828, something like that, yung value niya. No? And Poisson distribution, if igagraph natin, ganito po ang itsura niya. So, here's the distribution for lambda equals 2, yung 2 arrival rate, and here's the distribution for lambda equals 4. So, more likely, guys, uh, ang sinasabi lang dito is kapag dumadami yung lambda mo, no, lumiliit yung probability mo dito. Mga baba siya. Unlike dito, no, sa 1 and 2, kung titignan ninyo, 1 and 2, 0 0.25, mas mataas pa nga, no, mas mataas pa dun. Well, dito sa atin, sa 3 and 4, na lambda natin, 0.02 na lang siya. Maliit na. 
Actually, this is 0.2. Yung this is 0.2. Baliktad. 0.15, 0.10, 0.05. Okay, so that is how the Poisson distribution looks like. So, pataas muna siya, tapos unti-unti siyang pagbaba ng ganyan. So, in statistics, basic statistics, this is somehow uh, positively skewed distribution. I'm going to write the tail. Okay, that is the Poisson distribution. Now, we have the different behaviors of arrivals. So, first, ano naman itong mga, yung pagdating ng mga clients na ng mga customers. May tinatawag po tayo na bulking. When we say bulking, the customers are deciding not to join the queue if it is too long. No, alam ko nararasan niyo to, guys. Nakita niyo yung pila? Sobrang haba. Mapapaisip kayo, pipila ba ako or hindi? Eh, tamad ako pumila. Ayoko na kasi mahaba. That is bulking. No, ay, uh, huwag niyo kakalimutan yan, no? I hope isa puso't isa isip. <laughs> That is the first behavior of arrivals. Second behavior of arrivals, this is what they call the managing. Now, customers leave the queue if they have waited too long for the service. Ito naman, now, pumila ka, nasa kalagitnaan ka na ng pila, inip na inip ka na. <laughs> Ayaw mo nang maghintay dahil sawa ka na na pinapaghintay. So, ang gagawin mo, aalis ka na lang. That is remaging. Without having the service na inihintay mo. Kasi naman, mahirap kasi maghintay, lalo na kung hindi mo alam kung hanggang kailan, di ba? <laughs> That is remaging, guys. Mahirap maghintay, lalo na kung hindi mo alam hanggang kailan. No, gaano katagal pa ang paghihintay na gagawin. <laughs> That is remaging. Now, For the third behavior of arrivals, we have the so-called jockeying. Ito naman, jockeying, customers switch between queues if they think they will get served faster by doing so. Ito yung maraming pila, pwedeng dalawa or tatlo or apat. Nakapila ka na sa gitna, pero hindi ka mag-renage kapag naiinip ka. No, ito yung mga tao na kapag nainip sila, hindi sila alis ng pila. But rather, hahanap sila ng mas maikling pila. Madalas ito sa counter ng mga fast food. No? Hahanap ka ng mas maikling pila, then doon ka lilipat. That is what we call jockeying. Okay? I hope wag nang kakalimutan. Hindi makalimutan sana. No? Bulking, renaging, jockeying. So we have here the visual representation. So the arrival process. Ito yung buong sistema, yung naka-square. No? Uh, bulking, nakita mo ang haba ng pila, alis ka na lang. Uh, pratandaan, for the renaging, nasa loob ka na ng pila, nainip ka, alis ka na lang. Now, for the jockeying, nasa loob ka na ng pila, then di, pwede ka lumipat doon sa pabila. Lahat yan, ang unang goal nila is of course to have the service, pero pwedeng umalis dahil nga uh, sa haba ng pila. And in business perspective, that is an opportunity loss. No, nasayang yung client mo. So, that is the different behaviors ng arrival CTL system. Okay, now for the service characteristics naman, we have the skewing systems design. So, single channel system, multiple channel system, single phase system, multi-phase system. On our next uh, slide, I will have an example for this one para mas magets ninyo, no? For the second service characteristics, service time distribution. Here, constant yung service time natin. And random service times, usually a negative exponential distribution. Ito naman is yung paangat, if I'm not mistaken. Na paangat yung distribution niya. So, ano tong queuing system designs na sinasabi ko? For queuing systems design, example, no, a family dentist office. So, we have here the arrival, nyo, no, single channel. Ito yung channel na tinuturo yung queue, yung pila. Then, single phase uh, system. Yung service facility, isa lang. Then, kapag na-serve ka na, alis na. Departures. Ganyan, example na, family dentist office. No? Pwede naman, McDonald's dual window drive-thru. I hope you're all familiar with drive-thru. So, dual yung window nyan. No? Queue, ito yung queue, arrivals queue, pila ka, single channel. That is single channel. Then, nagiging multi-phase siya dahil we have the dual service facility. So, phase 1, 
tapos phase 2. That's why this is called multi-phase system. Then, so, then once you get the food you've ordered, departure ka na. No, exit ka na sa system. That is the single channel multi-phase system. Okay? So, example naman for the most of the banks and post office service windows, this is what we call the multi-channel single phase system. So, here, we have the arrivals and of course the queue. Then, paano siya naging multi-channel? Dahil going siya into different service facility, pero this is considered as single phase system. Dahil sabay-sabay sila, iisa lang sila makakonsider. Pero kung ito sa'yo, maraming windows. No, ayun naman is, again, multi-channel, single phase system. Ito yung multi, no, multi-channels. Ito naman yung single phase system. So, you have your channel 1, channel 2, and channel 3. And once you get the service you desire, or you wanted, or you need, exit ka na sa system. Departure. Okay? And lastly, we have here the multi-channel, multi-phase system. So, for the example, some college registration, so mga enrollments ninyo. No, arrivals, this is the queue. Nagiging multi-channel siya dahil minsan pabalik-balik ka no, sa mga service facility. So, ito, ganun dyan, we have channel 1, channel 2, channel 1 ulit, then channel 2. And of course, we have the multi-phase system dahil pwede siya mag-cross, pwede pa ganun. Madami, no, iba-iba. Minsan, nasa accounting ka na, balik ka na naman ng, 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 ng enrollment, ng pricing, pabalik-balik. Depende sa course, depende sa kailangan mo, depende kung may pagsak o wala. No, maraming case, maraming, maraming mga factors na nakaka-apply. So, multi-channel, multi-phase system. Huwag pong kakalimutan. Then, so once you get the proper service, departure ka na sa system. Exit ka na sa system. Okay? Now, uh, patapos na po tayo, what we will going to talk now is all about the Kendall's Notation. What is this Kendall's Notation? This is basically a discipline within the mathematical theory of probability. So, Kendall's Notation is the standard system used to describe and classify a queuing node. Ito yung kung paano nilalagay. Kasi, di ba, marami tayong arrivals na discipline, Iba-iba yung sistema natin ng pagpila in every industry or in every field. So, iba-iba yung arrivals, iba-iba. Lahat iba-iba. So, we need to set the standard kung paano natin siya isusulat. Yung standard system nga. And that is the Kendall's notation. Now, David George Kendall proposed describing queuing models using three factors. Reden, A, slash S, slash S. C in 1953 where this letter A is the time between arrivals to the queue or the arrival rate. No, the letter S is the service time distribution or what we call the service rate. And letter C is the number of servers. Ilan ba yung servers na meron kayo? That is the letter C. No? And it has been extended to A, S, C, slash K, slash N, slash D where letter K stands for capacity of the queue. Ilan ba yung capacity nung, nung pila mo? Hanggang ilan ba? Kaya, di ba, yung iba may mga pila na nagka-cut off? No? Because they have specific capacity. So, if they have specific capacity lang, magdadagdag ka na yung, yung notation mo, yung Kendall's notation mo, will not only end at letter C, but rather, magdadagdag ka ng K or pwede rin N hanggang D na. Now, where letter N is the calling population. Ito yung nabangkit ko kanina. It can be a limited or unlimited population. Yung population size to be served. For example, ang population size to be served yung kanina sa car wash is unlimited. Hindi mo alam kung ilan lahat yung gusto magpa-car wash. That is an unlimited calling population. If naman, sa professor and students naman, no, professor and student. Si student kailangan magpasa ng project sa professor. So, nakapila, for example. That is a limited population size. Dahil, bilang mo lang kung ilan yung enrolled on that specific class. Okay, that is limited population. Next, for the letter D, this is the queuing discipline that we have tackled before. No, yung discipline na meron tayo. Ano-ano po ulit yung mga queuing discipline na yun? Uh, queuing disciplines, ito, balikan natin, no? Here, Ayan, we have the FIFO, we have the zero, we have the last in, first out, 
we have the PQ, we have the PS, etc. and etc. Now those are the queuing discipline letter D. Now when the three parameters are not specified, it is assumed that K is infinite, capacity is infinite, N is infinite or the calling population, and the letter D or the queuing discipline is first in, first out, automatic po yan. No, when the problem is not stated yung mga, yung tatlong parameters, yung last three, automatic yan. Infinite, infinite, and first in, first out. Madalas po kasi, no, hindi sila stated. And uh, kadalasan yan, ang stated lang is yung A, S, and C. Okay, anyway, on our operations research tool, on our models na papag-aralan dito sa queuing theory, na presented using Kendall notation, we will go into have the four models. Sobrang dami po ng models under queuing theory and on the undergrad na curriculum and syllabus. No, apat yung need nyo matutunan na models for this queuing theory. For the first one, we will go into have the MM1. So, medyo na iba. Na sir, sabi mo ASC. I will explain those uh, differences sa mga next na presentation natin. But for now, I will have the, I will give you, no, the different models na aralin natin. So, for the first model, we will go into study, the MM1. Second, the MMM, yung maliit na M. Third, we have the MD1. And the fourth one, we have the MM1 with finite source. Okay? So, this will be our next topic. Actually, tapos na po yung presentation natin. That is the introduction of the queuing theories and the four models na naibigay ko sa inyo on the previous slide. That will be our next topic on the next presentations. Okay? So, I hope guys, nabigyan ko kayo ng enough na glimpse kung ano nga ba si queuing theories, ano siya ina-apply, paano siya ina-apply, and ano yung general purpose niya, ano yung value niya in the organization as a whole. Okay, so that is our uh, presentation regarding the introduction of queuing theory. I hope you learned something from this presentation, guys. Keep safe always. May you enjoy the rest of the day. And of course, enjoy the rest of the week. Bye, guys! <music>